My name's Scotty, I'm a lease hand here on Rig 9 and I'm going to talk you guys through the whole process of um, what it's like to work out on the drill rigs. On your first hitch you'll go to stores, you'll get in your set of overalls, your boots and hard hat and appropriate uh, equipment that you need for out in the rig. So the way it works is you drive on out to Chinchilla, you meet up there with the rest of your crew and you jump in four drives and head from Chinchilla and we drive from there out to the camp. Um, we get in camp, check in, sign in, drop off all our gear, get changed and go straight up to the rig and start your shift. You need to make sure that you're fit and healthy, ready for work when you're sharp because you're going to get straight into it and it's, it is quite a labour intensive job. So at any one time there's two crews running um, on the rig doing 12 hours at a time so the rig actually is operating 24 hours a day. So one crew will do 12 to 12 so we start at midday, knock off at midnight, the other crew is ready to take off at midnight and work until the next day midday. When you start off or your entry level position into the into the drilling game is uh, called a lease hand or a roughneck. Uh, that's what I am, and they're pretty much the bottom of the ladder. Uh, basic jobs for a lease hand are making sure the lease is tidy, uh, making sure the water's uh, up on the rig floor for the boys, um, assisting the floorman. Um, basically, a roustabout, doing everything. Yeah, I'm the I'm the go-to man. If um, someone needs something done, um, I do it. So it doesn't um, leave anyone off the floor. Everyone can keep drilling steadily and 24 hours a day. From a roughneck or a lease hand, you move your way up. The next position is a floorman. Uh, his main sort of duties are running the floor. Um, so you got to make sure everything's all prepared. You make sure your tongs, slips, um, and everything are all ready. When it comes to drilling, tripping, and everything like that, I obviously um, work the tongs in correspondence with the driller. Um, throw slips um, and then yeah just make sure everything's all prepared and, and everything is going well up on the floor. After floorman you want to become a motorman. My job entails um, looking after all the mechanical works, hydraulics, um, day to day running of the rigs, refueling, checking oil levels, um, uh, vehicle inspections, things like that. Motorman becomes an assistant driller. My job is to supervise the crews and make sure everything's run properly and keep it on the tanks. And once you've been an AD for a while, you work your way up to become a driller. My job is to ensure that I drill the hole to specifications from the company man and our rig manager. That's the crew that's out on the floor. Those five guys are, are operating the drilling process and actually drilling the hole. Above the driller is what's called tool pusher. Uh, he lives in the, on the site. He manages both crews. I'm um, responsible for both crews. I'm the site safety manager. I live on the rig 24-7, so I'm here for myself for two weeks on, two weeks off. Um, on call, 24 hours a day as well, if we have a problem on the rig, um, I'm here to sort it out and get it fixed. Um, any kind of issues as well to look after crew. Um, yeah, so mainly just here for you guys. So, um, it took me a while to really understand exactly what we're doing out here, and I knew it was called drilling, but you know, it's not your, your cordless drill, drilling in a hole. This is a, a pretty big operation. As you can hear, it's a very noisy environment. What you, can, what you can hear behind us is a drill rig. Weatherford is a service company, so we are hired and contracted by an operator. We are contracted to drill the hole. We're, we're drilling for gas that's coming out of coal seam. So if we drill through these coal seams, and then uh, we can draw the gas out of them. We're told where to go, where to drill, uh, we get in position, rig up, drill the hole, pull it out, case it. They make sure the gas is there and then we'll come in and then, and then drill to, to whatever depth they need us to, um, log it and then we'll run casing so it's an actual well and that, that well can be produced for quite a long time. Oh, in a perfect world it would be about three to four days to drill one hole and move on to the next. Companies will come in after us and carry out work over and extract the gas. They will then use that gas, send it to a compressor station, pipe it off to Gladstone and then to various other ports around the world. So if you've uh, come from a traditional 9 to 5 job, you'll find this a bit different. Obviously you work two weeks on, two weeks off. Um, we still do a lot of hours. A lot of people say, oh you only work six months a year. Sure, that may be true, but we probably do more hours than someone who works a 9 to 5. 
We do 12 hours a day, 14 days straight. The lifestyle on the rig is, is um, pretty good. It takes a little while to get used to. It does take a while to get used to, but once you get used to it, you don't want to go back. Oh, it's a lot better than five weeks on, one week off. So uh, we get all our work done in one big bang. Then uh, we get to jump in our cars, head back home to our families and relax for a solid two weeks, which is um, quite unusual to have a, a two-week holiday every month. There's not many entry uh, positions you can go into without you know, some sort of qualifications. And coming in as a lease hand, the only real requirements is that you're prepared to work hard and uh, you can work outside in the environments. It's what you expect. It's all trees and dirt, and dirt roads and kangaroos and cows. And... Um, as you'll probably tell if you're going to be working with Weatherford in your induction process, safety is probably the most important thing out here and these guys take it very seriously. So uh, we all look out for each other. Um, it's, it's quite a dangerous environment. There's, it's not like working on a, on a construction site when there's hammers and nails and stuff. Everything out here is really big. All the tools are huge, all the machinery is big. Everything is um, very dangerous. So you do need to take a lot of caution. When you arrive um, at a drilling rig, um, it's a bit different than most other industries. There's a lot of high pressure um, all around the rig uh, with hydraulics and, and uh, mud pumps. Also everything weighs a lot. A lot of heavy lifting. Safety is a definite priority on the rig. You have to work safe, you have to work sensible. There's obviously a lot of heavy, dangerous machinery that can, you know, can, can hurt you or even cause death. Uh, Safety is safety's the main thing to keep in mind out here. You always, you always got to be on your toes, always looking at situations. Um, making sure what you're doing is safe um, and yeah before you do anything assess the situation and, and, and make sure that the, the procedures that you're doing are correct um, to SOPs and TRAs, that, that's what they're, they're for. The, the safety culture at Weatherford is, um, is excellent. Um, you, we're repeatedly told that uh, everyone's got the right to stop the job at any time so, so whether you've been here for five years or been here for two days, you can put your hand up and say, hey, I don't feel safe, stop the job. Um, and you won't get yelled at. Um, myself or any of the crew will come and sit down with you and say, hey, you know, this is what's going on. If you're not sure, come stand next to me. We'll run you through it as many times as you like. Um, everyone's got your back. Um, yeah, it's, it's safety's, safety's number one. It's, uh, we all want to go home at the end of the day. Have a chat with the, the older blokes and they'll tell you how important it is to be safe and follow all your regulations. We understand these risks and we all look after each other and through, through good teamwork and working together we minimise that risk and everyone goes home safe. It's all about looking after yourself and looking after the guy next year and that's where that second family so to speak when you're out here that's where you, you have that trust with that family, with that family that you work with out here because you've got to trust the guy that's with you, the guy that's next to you guy that you're spending 12 hours a day with. Yeah, you're working with these people for two weeks straight, like, they become, they become family, you become closer to each other, you get to know what they're like, what bugs them, what they enjoy. It's just like a team, it's just like a soccer team or anything like that, you, you get pretty close to them and yeah, the, the better you, you you work with them, obviously, the more smooth things run. Uh, everyone's got each other's back. We work as teams out here and, and get along very well. Don't be afraid to come out here. Um, I was a bit hesitant at first. You know, you hear the stories of um, you know, everyone's big, wide shouldered and everything like that, but that's not like that anymore here. Um, times have changed. Everyone's got each other's backs. Uh, and before you know it, you, you can become great mates with everyone. Um, you know, you cook up after, you leave here, go and have a drink and dinner. Um, it's like a, another family, to, to be honest. You're mainly working with four guys at a time, or four to five guys at a time. So it is like a small basketball team or a football team or something like that. So that's where you're, you're going to have mates for life. Um, yeah, you, you know, really you, you go through blood, sweat and tears with them. This is the camp behind me. This is where you live in when you're out here working on the on the rig. Um, to be honest, 
camp is really just a place to eat and sleep, but they do make it as comfortable as possible. Yeah, you get well looked after. Uh, they do all the washing for you, make your beds, clean your floors, wash your undies. It's all good. Camp life's good. I mean, we got TVs in our rooms. The facilities are great. Your own room and your uh, ensuite right next to your door. I don't think anyone expects the camp life to be as nice as what it is. Some people refer to our camp as the Hilton. Uh, when you come out to camp, you really don't need to bring anything with you except your toothbrush and toothpaste and a change of clothes. Everything's provided for you. Your washing's done, your beds are made. So it's a, it's a cruisy lifestyle um, with no needs and there's nowhere to spend your money so you save a lot of it. It's a dry camp out here, which means no alcohol. And uh, they do this for a reason. Uh, basically look after employees that are here and uh, look after your best interests. Uh, if you're a smoker, there's designated smoking areas, both here at camp and up on the rig. There's also a gym. Uh, the food is just awesome. You put on a bit of weight, which, uh, which you try and burn off during the day, but they keep feeding you every three hours. They bring you food every three hours here. So there's an abundance of food. So I get up at five, I get a cook breakfast in the morning. I have smoko at nine, I have lunch at 12, then I have smoker again at three in the afternoon, and then a decent, a decent cooked meal in the evening, which can range from fish of the day um, all the way through to, uh, to a T-bone steak. There's coffee, biscuits, soft drinks, cookies, there's a whole fridge full of desserts. Uh, it's, it really is a bit, um, a bit over the top. For a, a daily menu, we would have a, um, a breakfast of bacon and eggs, um, omelettes, um, toasted sandwiches, and then you can go into um, lunch or morning tea as a choice of snack foods. Uh, we call them smokos. And then lunch we have a choice. Uh, today, for instance, is a chicken and prawn salad or barbecue spare ribs. And tonight we have ooh, Thai fish and udon noodles, which nobody ordered, and <laughs> tea bone. So you've got a menu with uh, two options. Today I think there was a T-bone steak or a fish curry. Um, I went with the T-bone. I mean, how often do you get to eat a T-bone at work? The advice I'd give to someone who's, who's a greenie coming on um, is, is put your head down and bum up. Um, ask questions, never be afraid to ask. Um, and just work, work, work and work. There's a fella here that's um, not long started and he's jumped up the ranks extremely fast um, because he's, he's put out, um, he, he's a fast learner and doesn't mind getting down and dirty so my, my advice is, is just go hard. This job isn't for everybody, it takes a certain type of person to work out here. Um, it's pretty hard work, you've got to have a right work eth ethic, 12 hours, long hours. And there's plenty of work out here so it's a good opportunity for some young guys to come out and. Um, and, good, and get a great future. Um, I'm probably one of the oldest guys out here, um, but, which is good, so all the young guys keep me keen. Um, you know, you basically work hard, be safe all day. Um, the advice I could give you is, is keep your chin up, and um, obviously there's a bit of a, a hierarchy as I've explained, so just be prepared to take orders, and um, work hard, don't be a slacker, and if you put the hard yards in, you'll earn the respect from the rest of the crew, and you'll work your way up and enjoy your time out here. I think it's an exciting time to get into the Australian oil and gas industry. It's diverse. You, you need to be diverse yourself in your roles and have a wide range of experiences in order to tackle the problems that you get day to day on the rig. It's, it's challenging and, and you know, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Get in there and you'll get rewarded.